We have a big problem in our industry where a lot of contractors are replacing refrigerants and heating and air systems with the wrong refrigerant, whether it means they are completely replacing it, pulling the old refrigerant out and putting a new one in or mixing these refrigerants. In today's video, I want to cover why this matters, why you should care as a consumer and some of the problems that can arise from this. During the recording of this video, we are in the year 2025 and a big problem that we are seeing in our industry is this move from 410A refrigerant to these new A2L refrigerants, one of them being 454B. Moving forward, some of the contractors were going with R32, some of them were going with 454B. This is no secret, we've covered it in other videos, and the fact that 454B refrigerant has become very scarce. It's a big problem in our industry. A lot of companies in our industry have egg on their face because they made a very poor decision, and that's a whole nother topic that we have covered in other videos. But this has opened the door to folks not just doing things wrong, but they are now doing it openly. In fact, if you followed on social media at all, you'll see a number, numerous HVAC contractors saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'm putting 410A in a 454B system, or yeah, I'm topping it off, I'm topping that 454B system off with some other refrigerant, whether it's 410A or R32. Now, why would someone wanna do that? Part of it is the scarcity, but also because the pricing. Some refrigerants do cost more than others, some refrigerants are more scarce than others, and because of that, it plays a big role in the price. Now, before you comment down below and say, oh, well, Josh, that's just supply and demand. I have documented this well, and it's not supply and demand. Supply and demand is where free market means something is in short supply and the price goes up because of it. In this case, this is a artificial man-made shortage where people are either incompetent or or intentionally making this shortage to line their pockets and get more wealthy. But I think some other things should be pointed out here. And that is that not all refrigerants are created equal. When we went from R22 refrigerant to 410A years ago, in some cases saw the pressures of the two refrigerants being a three to one ratio. Our working head pressures in some cases tripled from what we had gotten used to in our industry. And that's kind of concerning, even if it's only slightly higher or lower. Dialing in the subcool, for example, for this refrigerant that you have not tested in that system, the metering device may not match that refrigerant, and now you're trying to dial in the refrigerant so it blows cold. Yes, you can look at the delta T, meaning the temperatures going in the return and coming out the supply, and that can tell you something. But the fact is, adding that refrigerant to that system means you actually don't know what the pressures need to be, especially if you're mixing refrigerants. But the other thing that should point it out is the temperatures themselves are different with some of these refrigerants. In fact, R32 specifically has a higher discharge temperature than other of the refrigerants that we are seeing sold predominantly in our industry. And so because of that, if you were to add R32 to one of those systems, a system that isn't built well, a system that isn't made for R32, that higher discharge temperature could literally burn up some of the components. Components that were not meant for that. It could be hard on the compressor. It could be hard on other components, such as the reversing valve that's got a shift and other components that could be sensitive to high heat. Another thing that should be pointed out is the oils could be different. Now, many of the oils that we see with these new A2L refrigerants are similar, if not the same to 410A, but I think it still should be pointed out because if again, that system wasn't made for that refrigerant, that could be a problem. Some of the refrigerants have a lower capacity. So if you were to add one refrigerant versus another into that system, dialing in that refrigerant might mean adding more than the amount of refrigerant or less than was originally intended, but you also may get less capacity out of the performance of that system, the BTUs, the tonnage of that system, for example. You may have a four ton system installed, but only get three tons out of it. There's also flammability. These new A2L refrigerants are slightly flammable. They've been tested, they've been approved. There's sensors in there designed to sense that refrigerant leak and go into mitigation mode if it does sense it. And again, if you're adding refrigerants that don't belong, possibly mixing some of those refrigerants, that could also play a big role in all of that. At the end of the day, especially if you're mixing them, you're turning someone's home into your personal science experiment. Mixing refrigerants creates a chemical cocktail that could have dangerous effects for those living in that home. Now you might say, well, Josh, 
You don't know that. You don't know that this is a problem. Yeah, but you don't either. You don't know what you've just done to that heating and air system and created a long-term problem. Yes, you'll be long gone. I know you don't care, especially if you're a heating and air guy in our trade that never cared to start with. If you're the kind of heating and air guy that does see sorts of things, such as mixing refrigerants when you know you're not supposed to, then of course you probably don't care. But the flammability, the possibility of combustion, the possibility of corrosive chemicals coming in in contact with others and at the end of the day the fact that the EPA forbids you to do just that. Snap rules specifically state that you are not supposed to do it. Yes, that system could blow cold today, but years from now when that system degrades because of incompetence by the HVAC technician, not only could that system have problems, but the warranty could be void. And so just to wrap up, if you are an HVAC contractor that's caught this, what do you do? What do you do if you can't get your hands on a jug of 454B refrigerant? Well, we did a video on that. I'll put a link to that down in the description of this video on what some of the options are, what some of the other contractors in our trade are saying they are doing. But I will say this, if you're a homeowner and you have bought a heating and air system, the last thing you want is for that HVAC contractor that doesn't care about you, they don't care about your system five or 10 years from now and the problems that you'll have to deal with because of it. And that is to unfortunately have to be there, be that hover, that helicopter customer and stand there while they're doing their work and make sure you know what refrigerant belongs in that system and make sure when they pull that tank off the truck that it at least says that on the side of the tank or box. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them down in the description of this video. I do my best to read all of of those comments. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I cover some of the mistakes I think homeowners should know when it comes to air conditioning. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.